Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. Today I am back with a review of the brand new headsets from Audio Technica, the ATH-M50X STS, which is XLR, and the STS USB, which is USB. If you want the XLR version, that will cost you around $200. The USB will cost you $230. Like always, I'll throw some affiliate links in the description down below. And for the majority of this review, I am running the XLR version of this headset into the Focusrite 18i 22nd gen, 48 volts on, gain set at 2 o'clock, recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz, no post processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly-doo or the lower third to see what I diddly did. Now, let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course, you are going to get the headset, which has the microphone permanently attached on a boom arm. You will also get two sets of ear pads, one being the standard M50X pads in case you want that sound profile, the second being a thicker memory foam feeling pad that has fabric as opposed to the pleather so it breathes a bit more. The XLR version comes with a 3.5 millimeter to quarter inch adapter for the headphone jack. The USB version comes with a USB-A to USB-C adapter and you get a little bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, these are just M50Xs with an AT2020 capsule slapped onto it. So they are tried and true. They are durable. They are long lasting. The build quality is really nice. There is a good amount of stretch and expansion, so it should fit a lot of head sizes. Although I have heard from some people with bigger noggins than mine that there is a bit too much clamping force. There is plenty of extension on the side so you can get the ear cups in exactly the right position. There was a good amount of padding along the headband where I didn't find any kind of pressure points while wearing these over an entire day. The thicker pads have plenty of padding and depth to them and I had no pressure points or pain even while wearing them with glasses so these pads are incredibly comfortable. The ear cups also have plenty of rotation at around 180 degrees so they should form to your head very nicely. And although the classic M50X ear pads are fine and if you want that classic M50X sound that's what you should use but I found myself enjoying the slightly more padded and breathable version of the ear pads. Both versions of the headsets have permanently attached cables which are two meters long. They are standard rubber, they are nothing to write home about. The USB version terminates into a standard USB-A cable, but as I mentioned, you do get a USB-A to USB-C adapter, and the XLR version terminates into an XLR and a 3.5 millimeter TRRS plug, but you do get that 3.5 mil to quarter inch adapter. And finally, if it matters to you, these devices are made in Taiwan. Then as far as the functionality, both versions of the headset have the exact same microphone. When the microphone is up, it is muted. And once the mic gets past this little graduated click, it is live. The mic arm also has a good amount of adjustability here so you can get it in exactly the right position. And on the USB version of the headset, you have a volume rocker on the microphone side's ear cup. Rocking this up or down will increase or decrease the amount of zero latency monitoring, and pushing this button will mute zero latency monitoring, but keep in mind that does only mute the zero latency monitoring. Your microphone will still be live for the recording, the stream, or for the conference call. If you want to mute your microphone to those sources, you still need to rotate the microphone up. I just need to point that out so nobody makes a fool of themselves and gets fired or something. And finally, as far as comfort, I was able to wear these all day at work without having any kind of issues. I didn't feel like there was too much pressure. I didn't have any pressure points on the top of my head. The only thing I did have an issue with is my ears got a little bit warm after a couple of hours. That's probably because I'm a bit spoiled and my main headphones are open backs, the Sennheiser HD 650s and that may be the most breathable thing ever, so maybe I am just hypersensitive to warm ears. Then as far as the specs, the headphones have 45 millimeter dynamic drivers with a frequency response of 15 hertz to 28 kilohertz and an impedance of 38 ohms. The microphone is a condenser capsule. 
It has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 44.5 dB, an impedance which is unknown, a max SPL which is unknown, a self noise which is unknown. The USB version has conversion of 24 bit up to 96 kilohertz, and the XLR version has a phantom power requirement of plus 11 to plus 52 volts. Then as far as the sound quality of the headphones, I cannot offer anything of value over what Resolve offered on the headphone show review of the M50Xs, so I am going to link his review in the episode notes in the description. Watch that if you want to know more about the headphones, technical performance, the tonal characteristics, everything about the headphones. But at a very top level, I find the M50Xs to be perfectly listenable. They are a little bit low mid heavy, but they aren't sharp, they aren't piercing, they aren't fatiguing, they are inoffensive, they are a bit basic, and I think that's why the M50Xs are so popular. If you are looking for headphones that you are going to be able to listen to sonically for an entire day, they fit the bill. This is weird, but I am now spinning around the microphone to 90 degrees. You can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration continuing around, and this is the rear of the microphone on the XLR version continuing around. This is the next 90-degree angle, and then rotating, and now we are at the front of the mic. Now let's go ahead and test the plosive rejection. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. And now with the microphone right at the corner of my mouth, please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now the microphone is directly next to my mouth, and here is how it's sounding with all of the proximity effect. Now here is how the microphone sounds, maybe an inch away from the corner of my mouth so it doesn't capture all of my breaths and all of the air. And now the microphone is about two inches off of my mouth, and here is how it sounds. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, now I am typing on the sad W and the spacebar key. Z. Now here is how the USB headset microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And now here is how the USB version of the headset sounds in a completely untreated space. Next, I want to see how the microphone handles shocks and handling noise. I'll start by tapping on the headphones to see if it picks that up. Then I'll tap on the boom arm. Now I want to test out the mute functionality to see if there was any kind of audible click when we mute or unmute the microphone. So let's go ahead and try that. Pretty good. Now I want to try something that I haven't done in any of my other videos, and that would be EQing the microphone that I'm reviewing to try to get it to sound a bit better and a bit more natural. I will throw my EQ curve up on screen. I never get this aggressive with EQ on anything other than headsets, but this headset needs it. The first thing we're doing is a 50 hertz high pass filter. I'm doing 36 dB per octave to just clean up any kind of rumble caused by the next thing we're doing. Then we are adding a plus 5.5 dB low shelf at 120 hertz with a Q of 1. The reason I am doing this is to try to bring back what they have high passed to make it sound more like the AT2020, which had a lot more body. Then we're doing a minus 3 dB bell with a Q of 0.46 at 480 hertz. This cleans up a lot of the congestion in the mids that I hear, which I think is quite unflattering. And the final thing we're doing is a minus 2 dB bell with a Q of 0.67 at 4.4 kilohertz. The reason that I wanted to do this is this headset has the exact same capsule as the AT2020, but it sounds so drastically different. 
I know the AT2020 can sound pretty good, so I wanted to see if I could get this headset microphone to sound a bit better. Let me know what you think. Was it an improvement, or did I make it absolute garbage? Give me some feedback, please. And now, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone we're reviewing and a couple other microphones on the market so we can see how it stacks up against the competition and understand its place in the market as a whole. Starting on the XLR version of the M50X, gain set at 2 o'clock, and here is how it sounds. First up is the Audio-Technica AT2020, 3 inches off, which is very close, gain set at 2 o'clock, this goes for $100. The reason I'm comparing this, the capsule in the 2020 is the same capsule on the M50X-STS. Does it sound the same? No. But here's the comparison. Let's do more. Back again on the XLR version of the M50Xs. Here is how it sounds. Let's go to another microphone or headset. Now I am on the Sennheiser Game 1s, although I think they go by a different name now. Epos? Game ones, and I believe they cost around $80. I am connected directly to my computer's headset input, 3.5 mil TRRS input, level set at 75%. This is your standard gaming headset sound. Do the M50X STSs offer a huge improvement over this? Is it justifiable? Or do you prefer this sound? Let me know. Let's go do more things, please. What? Back again on the M50X XLR version, nothing has changed, here's how it sounds, check the lower third, let's go to another mic. Now I am on the ATH-M50X STS-USB, this goes for $230, I am connected directly to my Mac, level set at 50%, 24-bit 48kHz, and here's how it sounds. Noticeable difference from XLR to USB, or identical? You be the judge. Let's go on. All right, we are back on the XLR version of the M50Xs. Nothing has changed. Let's go to another one. Now I am on the Audio-Technica BPHS1, which goes for about $220. My gain is still set at 2 o'clock. The microphone position is somewhat similar. This has a dynamic capsule, and here is how this compares to the new condenser alternative from Audio-Technica, and the M50Xs also have much better headphones compared to the BPHS-1. There's the comparison. We are already at the penultimate microphone, but this is your palate cleanser on the ATH-M50X-STS. Let's go to the penultimate microphone. Now I am on the Audio-Technica BPHS-2, which goes for about $350. Gain still set at 2 o'clock. Another dynamic capsule. Another broadcast dynamic headset from Audio-Technica. How does this sound compared to the M50Xs? Let me know in the comments down below, and let's jump to the final microphone. And you all know what the final microphone is going to be, but first, palate cleanser, M50X-STS. Let's go to the final mic. This gets more ridiculous every time. Finally, I am on the Neumann, hello Neumann, U87AI. This goes for $3,700. Cardioid mode, no pad, no filter, gain set at 11 o'clock. And here is how this sounds at three inches away compared to a headset condenser microphone, which is a lot cheaper. There you go. That's the baseline. That is it. There's no music test. So let us jump to the conclusion. All right. I think that this headset was inevitable. Audio-Technica has the best-selling headphones with the M50Xs and the best-selling microphone with the AT2020. It was only a matter of time before they smashed the two together and created this headset, and it has finally happened. And first up, as far as pros, the build quality of this headset is fantastic. The M50Xs are tried and true. They are durable. They last forever. This headset is no different because it is the M50Xs. 
I also appreciate that they provide you with two different sets of pads, one being identical to what comes on the M50Xs, a second pair being a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more breathable, which is what I prefer for long-term listening. It also has a relatively quiet mute of the microphone, so if you're in a call, it's not going to be noticeable when you mute and unmute. And as far as the background noise rejection of the microphone, I think it was pretty respectable. And the final pro for me is I like the fact that the USB version of this headset has conversion that is pretty capable and goes up to 24-bit, 96 kilohertz. But then as far as cons, I dislike the permanent cable because I always run over my headphone cables and when the cable goes bad, I don't want to have to ship the entire headset back to Audio-Technica for RMA and repair. And secondly, I would love if they included some form of windscreen for the microphone just to improve the rejection of plosives and breathing noises a little bit more. And now what about my overall thoughts and opinions of the M50X STSs? I'm not going to share my opinions on electric guitar and acoustic guitar for obvious reasons. Then as far as spoken word, I think the microphone exhibits a lot of characteristics that you can find on headset microphones that I don't think sound very good. The first one is going to be a very aggressive high pass filter up to around 150 or 200 hertz. But the second characteristic is a much more mid forward and mid focused sound. And I just don't think that's the most flattering thing for spoken word. As far as the high pass filter, I think the reason they do this is because of the proximity of the microphone to the sound source. With a headset mic, it is about an inch or two away from your mouth. That means the microphone is going to exhibit a lot of proximity effect. They want to roll that all off so the audio doesn't come across overly muddy. But as far as the mid-focus of the vast majority of headset microphones, this one included, I don't understand the logic behind it and I don't think it's the best decision. Because of all of that, I think the microphone comes across very mid-focused and mid-forward and I don't think it's necessarily going to be the best pick for a lot of applications. As far as headset microphones go, I do think it sounds better than a lot of the competition and if you do want to use this for more professional applications, you're going to have to EQ the heck out of it. To wrap up, would I recommend the Audio-Technica ATH-M50X-STS? Yes and no. Let's start with the yes. If you have the budget and you are looking for a plug-and-play USB headset for work from home, for teleconferencing, for Discord, for any non-professional use cases, yes, I would recommend it. I find the headphones to be extremely easy to listen to for long periods of time. They are not sharp, they are not fatiguing, and when you are on work calls with people who don't have good sounding microphones, that is incredibly important. Also, the inclusion of a second set of pads makes sure that you can get the exact sound or the comfort that you want. I like the more comfortable side, and as far as the microphone goes, it doesn't compete with a full-on microphone, but as far as headset microphones go, it does sound a bit better than the competition. And just to share this with you, because everything that I just said, the USB version of this headset is now what I use for my day job. This is how I take all my work calls, because it's easy to listen to, and the microphone is clear and better than a lot of headsets out there, especially a lot of 3.5 mil headsets, which is what I had to use before. So this is now my work headset, and you're going to pry it from my cold, dead fingers. But then as far as who I wouldn't recommend this headset for, if you already have a full microphone setup that you are happy with, and you don't need a headset, I would not recommend this. It's not going to give you better sound quality. Yes, it makes microphone technique easier. I think the better sound quality is the route to go. Adding on top of that, if you are in the market for a microphone setup and you are torn between the headset mic and a proper microphone setup with the mic, the XLR cable, and the interface and standalone headphones, I would go the full microphone route because again, you are going to get much better audio quality. And to sound like a broken record, if you are a podcaster, I don't think this is the best fit. Go for a full microphone setup. Go for an XM8500, a UM2, even an AT2020 and a UM2. You will get infinitely 
better sound than the microphone on this headset. A bit of an add-on, if you are extremely, extremely lazy and you are the worst person with microphone technique, perhaps this could work for podcasting. I just think you will have to get far too aggressive with the EQ to make it sound not like a headset mic. You can do it. It's not going to be perfect, but you can make it a lot better. All right, that is all that I've got for you today. I would love to hear from you in the comments down below which of the headset mics was your favorite. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go to give me a thumbs up, hated it, big ol' thumbs down. If you want a video beneath me, YouTube thinks that video is perfect for you, click on it. You will love it. I agree with them. These people are amazing. They support the channel at $5 or more. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Whoa. Whoa.